Oh my god. I forgot to turn off the oven. No. All my precious robins are dead and it's all my fault. Oh god. Master Wright, some men just want to watch the world burn. You know, I live in something of a society myself. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Batman loses Robins on the regular, that's no secret. The first to fall was Jason Todd after his death at the hands of the Joker. Then there was Tim Drake after he was torn to shreds by assault drones. Then Dick Grayson got his head blown off and became Brad Pitt in Fight Club. And last but not least, the death of Damian Wayne, which I think is probably the most brutal death in my opinion for a Robin. See, because during the events of Batman Incorporated, Batman had been captured and submerged underwater by Talia al Ghul. Damian Wayne refused to listen to his father and stay behind in the Batcave, thus choosing to help his father and Nightwing against his mother, leaving Batman unable to help Damian and Dick fend off against the Leviathan army. Soon, the villain known as the Heretic engaged in a deadly fight between the pair and after tossing aside Dick like a sack of potatoes, Heretic and Robin engaged in a deadly match of Mortal Kombat between one another, and with each blow that Robin would deliver, it had almost seemed redundant due to Heretic's insurmountable strength. Which leads to one of the most brutally drawn pages I've ever seen of Heretic just gruesomely destroying Damian Wayne as Damian desperately calls out to anyone for help. Which I'll add brings so much more nuance to this moment because Damian I don't think has ever been shown in a light such as this. He's always been a stubborn character that refuses itself from those around him because he thinks that he'll appear weak to others accepting it, making this moment all the more impactful. After this page, the brutality doesn't stop even for a moment as Batman desperately tries to help Robin as he tragically witnesses his own son get shish kebobbed, ending the comic off with an utterly polarizing panel of Batman cradling his dead son in his arms. After this, Batman and the rest of the heroes stop Leviathan, but in the end his son is still dead and Bruce cannot handle the loss of his son, which leads to many sad moments such as Bruce walking up to Damien's pet bat cow and pets her in the most depressing panel ever created. It's kind of funny because this image gets memed a lot, but with context it's so sad. And upon burying Damien with the rest of the Bat family by his side, Bruce declares that there will never be another Robin ever again. Yeah, okay. And the following Batman comics show Bruce no longer pulling punches, breaking thugs in two, and growing crazier with every passing day due to the inability to accept his son's death. And not only does it show Batman in such a state, but it also shows the lasting consequences of Damien's death. Death is completely and utterly unfair. The initial event is quick, but the effects can last a lifetime, and this Batman arc does an incredible job of showing what losing a loved one is like for a lot of people. Which makes way for the theme of the five stages of grief and the following six issues of Batman and Robin. And I absolutely adore this story arc because it uses other bad family members as different stages of Batman's grief in such an excellent way, leading to an incredibly sad resolution that left me in tears upon reading. As the first comic begins, it takes place after the dust has settled with Bruce sitting in Damien's room. Bruce walks around and sifts through some of Damien's belongings and the sadness is just dripping from panel to panel. We then transition to Alfred crying non-stop at a family portrait with Damien remaining unfinished and Bruce takes the portrait away and slides down to the Batcave and for a split second he almost forgets that Damien isn't by his side anymore. Upon suiting up he looks at Damien's gear never to be worn again and just swallows the pain riding out into the night. Gliding through the city he feels Damien by his side for a split second, but once he turns to see his reflection, Damien just isn't there. As someone who has lost loved ones or pets, this hits home for me because when you lose someone very close to you unexpectedly, you're in a state of mind subconsciously like, oh, my cat will be at home under the bed waiting for me and once I come inside, she'll jump out and play. But once you get into the home and there is no cat coming out to play or that one person isn't there, the reality hits that you're alone and the sadness hits you like a wave all over again. That's what this comic is showing us, that Batman is doing all these things to find his son somewhere through it all, but can't because he's gone. Faced with that reality, Batman preys on the criminals in Gotham as it's always been Batman's avenue to ease his pain, delivering vengeance onto the wicked and delivers each one of them to GCPD to fill the void left behind by Damien. But upon entering the cave, it all floods back in Batman's head and the void is still there. When undressing, he finds a note left by Damien reading, Father, I'm sure you'll be very angry with me for disobeying you again, but I don't care. I will not let you fight Leviathan alone. You need me and I will always be there at your side. Because it will be hard for me to say these words face to face, I want you to know that mother may have given me life, but you taught me how to live. Love and respect, your son, 
Damien. And Batman in a brief moment loses all composure and destroys Robin's locker and finally hugs the only thing to him that resembles Damien, which is the Robin uniform. This entire comic is showing everything in Batman's life is beginning to become undone, making way for the first stage of grief, denial. Days later, while the hero known as Frankenstein battles off against demons, Batman captures him to see what exactly makes him tick, and then figure out how to reverse engineer whatever it is to resurrect his own son. Batman then begins testing on Frankenstein without his consent by taking his entire body apart, looking over it inch by inch. Frankenstein tries convincing Batman that if he were to bring his son back by making Damien just like him, he'd be cursing his son to the most horrific life. But Batman in denial doesn't care how his son is brought back. So long as he's alive, that's all that matters to him, completely disregarding his own son's best interests for the sake of his own, slowly growing more and more crazy because of this pursuit to bring his son back to life. Alfred appalled by what Batman is doing, he sends in Tim Drake to stop him, and upon Tim finding Batman, Tim tells Batman that Damien is gone and whatever he's trying to do won't bring him back, but Batman refuses to give up, saying that he's been dead before. Superman was dead, and Frankenstein is a walking corpse, shouting at Tim that he'll find a way to bring Damien back no matter what it takes. However, Tim sends the Batwing to fire upon Batman's lab, destroying any chance of bringing back Damien. After the destruction of the lab, Batman just menacingly glares at Tim before grappling away. With no other feasible option to bring Damien back, this makes way for the next stage of grief, Rage. In the next issue, Bruce tracks down a bounty hunter group that was trying to kill Damien for $500 million in a different story. Alfred is more concerned for Bruce's well-being than ever before, and Bruce is looking for something to hurt all the time now, completely shutting himself away from everyone he cares about, except for Jason Todd, whom he feels can relate to his rage and help him on his mission to destroy the bounty hunters. Jason asks why Bruce would want him to go, and Bruce simply says he's seeing red. Upon entering their base setup in Ethiopia, they brutally destroy the group and Batman goes a step beyond just crippling and renders each of the hunters unable to ever use their hands ever again. After decimating the bounty hunters, Batman takes Jason to the site of where he died years ago, where Jason realizes Batman didn't take him here to help fight the bounty hunters, but to ask how he came back to life. This enrages Jason so the two begin to fight, but when Batman allows Jason to hit him repeatedly, Jason realizes that Bruce is broken, leaving Batman behind to make way for the next stage of grief. Bargaining. This stage is centered around Batgirl noticing Bruce's behavior with fighting crime has drastically changed. Not only is Batman extremely brutal more than ever, but when faced with a hostage situation, Batman tries committing suicide by convincing the criminals to kill him in the place of the hostages. Batgirl saves him from the hostage situation, to which Batgirl later confronts Batman in the Batcave about everything he's been putting his family through, the city through, and what he's indirectly doing to the memory of Damien, jumping into his own grave essentially because he feels he should pay a price for his son's death. Batgirl even smashes the Robin case, grabbing the suit, yelling at Bruce that is this what you need? Another Robin to keep you from going over the edge? But Batman says he doesn't need saving. His son did and he let him die, leading Batman to scream at Batgirl to leave the Batcave at once. Once gone, Batman is now shown falling down deeper and deeper into the next stage of grief. Despair. When we next find Bruce, he's pretty much in the sunken place, listening to old audio files of Damian Wayne and needs something to raise his spirits desperately, leading Catwoman to get in touch with Batman using her very own cat signal to ask for help in saving an asset of hers. Batman reluctantly agrees, and the two fight off criminal after criminal to save the asset, where Batman finds out that the asset Catwoman needed to secure was a little girl held captive by Z-list supervillains. Obviously, the two take down the villain swiftly, and Batman even threatens to cripple one of the villains if they don't let go of the girl after being reminded of Damien, and you can almost feel the anger and sadness through the way Batman is illustrated here. After saving the girl, Batman promises the girl she'll see her parents again, and asks if the girl has ever dreamed of flying. The girl says yes, and so Batman tells her to keep her eyes open for this next part, because she will be safe in his arms. As the three fly blissfully into the night sky, lifting Batman's spirits and taking him to the next stage of grief. Acceptance. This next issue, Nightwing is the one to go through this stage with Batman as he's been running multiple simulations to see if he could have done something differently to save Damien. Time after time, it's resulted in failure and after four days, Alfred calls upon Nightwing to help Batman. For Batman running all these simulations back to back, it's almost like live, die, repeat. 
each time dying just before he can save Damien. And after the last simulation ended with the deaths of Batman, Damien, and Heretic, Bruce awakes with pure rage. When Bruce sees Nightwing, he thinks he's there to just talk some sense into him, but Nightwing knows that once Bruce has something set in his mind, he won't walk off that edge, so he turns the simulation into two-player. Over and over, Nightwing and Batman get closer and closer to saving Damien, desperately trying everything they can to save Damien's life. But this time, with Nightwing by Batman's side, they come up with a permutation that'll save Damien, by stabbing the heretic through the chest, just as heretic did to Damien. They both ended up doing it. They saved Damien at the cost of breaking his code, but it still wasn't enough because in the end, Damien is still gone and there's nothing but a black hole in Batman's heart. To which Nightwing says that Damien would have never been without Bruce becoming Batman, and to turn that loss and tragedy into something not just for himself or Damien, but for the people they fight and die for, for the people of Gotham, for hope. Bruce says to Nightwing that he may have to live with his son's death, but he will never accept it, and Nightwing says that that's all anyone can expect from a father who had to bury his own son. Later, Alfred takes a look at the simulator, Curious, and sets up a simulation with just himself and Damien right before his death. Alfred tries to convince Damien that if he leaves the cave, he is going to die but Damien can't just willingly stand by if it means his father may need his help. So when Damien suits up and sets out to leave, Alfred pats Damien on the shoulder, telling him that his father is very proud of him. Upon moving his hand away, it's revealed he tranquilized him as he says Damien will now have a 10 hour nap and live to fight another day. Asleep, Alfred carries Damien to the back computer chair and says that he is so very proud of Damien and will never ever forgive himself for letting Damien leave the cave that night. As this is going on, Bruce watches the simulation the entire time and as Alfred awakes, tears stream from Alfred's eyes apologizing to Bruce and they both agree to share the pain together, shutting down the device, moving forward into the future. This is honestly one of the greatest Damian Wayne-centered stories in my opinion, which is a little ironic given that he's literally dead. This is also more so the first part to what ends up happening with Damian Wayne in the future. But it always brings me to such a sad state when Alfred runs the simulation with Damian. It's like a wave of depression splashing all over you and you genuinely feel each character's pain over the death of Damian, which makes what happens directly after this so incredibly beautiful. With that, I hope you guys like this video and please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and as always, I'll catch y'all on the flip side. Sometimes after recording, I just need a little snack to keep me going.